it's something that most of us can relate to, sowing seeds with keen anticipation, only to be disappointed by patchy germination. It's the most frustrating experience, right? But why does it happen and how can we up our germination game from mm, okay to absolutely outstanding? One of the biggest mistakes many of us make is sowing at the wrong temperature. By sowing at the right time of year and keeping the potting mix at the sweet spot for the seeds you are sowing, you can improve both germination speed and success. This table shows the ideal germination temperatures for some of our most popular crops. And you can clearly see the dramatic difference between cool season vegetables like cabbage, parsnip, peas and spinach and warm season crops or frost susceptible crops like most beans, melons and peppers. It goes without saying that by keeping temperatures within the optimal range, you can really up your germination wins. With the optimal temperature range for most cool season staples beginning at around 45 to 50 Fahrenheit or seven to 10 Celsius, you can see why delaying sowing in a cold spring makes sense. Better to wait until soil temperatures have risen up to that base level than trying to jump the gun and get disappointing results. Now this is where uh, row covers or cloches can come in handy because they essentially shift the whole growing season and those soil temperatures forward by as much as two weeks. And if you're using our garden planner, you can see that when you add one of these covers, the sowing dates are automatically calculated for you in your accompanying plant list. Warm season favourites, on the other hand, need a minimum temperature more like 60 to 70 Fahrenheit, which is 16 to 21 Celsius. It's one reason why in a cool or temperate climate like mine, they really need to be sown indoors with a little bit of background heat. Case in point are these chilli pepper seedlings here. These were sown and then popped onto this heat mat here to get some bottom heat to germinate and they germinated really quickly. Look at them now, nice and healthy. But compare them to this pot here. These were sown at the same time about two and a half weeks ago but were not kept on a heat mat. And look, the germination is really patchy. What an incredible difference. Same variety and everything. Now I know not everyone has a heated mat or heated propagator, but look around the house as there may be alternatives. For example, you could put seeded pots and trays above a radiator like this behind me or above a fireplace, or perhaps in with your gas boiler or furnace, something like that. Wherever you put your seeded trays, just include a maximum minimum thermometer so you can keep track of temperatures and check that you're getting close to the optimal range for what you're sowing. As well as warmth and air, seeds of course need moisture to germinate. Soaking seeds before sowing can help to soften up the tough outer coating, which will make it easier for moisture to actually penetrate the seed within. It also helps to wash away the natural germination inhibitor that many seeds have. If you're wondering why on earth seeds would have a germination inhibitor, it's just to stop them germinating prematurely when conditions aren't quite right. When there's plenty of moisture around, that gets dissolved and then they're good to go. Soaking your seeds is super simple. Just fill a container with warm to the touch water, not so hot it's uncomfortable, otherwise that will harm our seeds as well. And then simply pop your seeds in and leave them to soak for eight to 12 hours. I find soaking overnight works well. Just make sure they're sitting under the water. Alternatively, for seeds that tend to float to the surface, just pop them onto a piece of paper towel like this, fold them over so they're nice and contained, then pop them into your container and fill with water. And what the paper towel will do is just kind of weigh the seeds down so they stay under water. Now, once the sowing period is up, get on and soak them immediately. Don't leave it any longer or let them dry out. Seeds that benefit from soaking include larger seeds like squash seeds, beans and peas and beets. And you can even soak garlic cloves and onion sets to plump them up ready for planting. Sometimes you can really see the impact that soaking has. These guys have been drained off having been soaked overnight and then these guys haven't yet been soaked and you can really see the contrast between them. And then there are chili peppers. Now trawl the chili chatrooms and one thing comes up 
Time and again, chamomile tea. What? Well, chamomile tea replicates what's going on in a bird's guts. Now birds, when they eat the chili pepper fruits, obviously disperse the seeds in their droppings. And chamomile tea replicates the guts of a bird by being mildly acidic. And that helps to break down the seed coating. Now all you have to do is make yourself a nice cup of chamomile tea, then drink it, and then use the same bag to make a second cup. And then let the water cool down to a comfortable temperature so you can touch it, and then add your seeds and let them soak. Soaking seeds isn't recommended for all seeds. While soaking tiny seeds like lettuce or basil won't do them any harm, what it will do is cause them to clump together, making sowing fiendishly difficult. Now we don't condone violence on this channel, but sometimes our seeds need a little bit of roughening up to encourage them along. Here's another way to breach the tough outer seed coat. Try filing down tough outer coats like these nasturtium seeds here using something like a nail file or quicker perhaps with uh, more seeds is to kind of rattle them between sheets of sandpaper. Now what I'm doing here is what's called scarification, a pretty cool name. It's mimicking the seeds bouncing around in the soil or rubbing against abrasive things that would naturally wear down that tough seed coat. And then there are flatter seeds like these squash seeds here. Now what I'm gonna do with these nail clippers is just carefully around the rounded edge of the seed is to nick little gaps in the woody outer coating, the woody seed coating. There we go. Now this needs to be done really, really carefully. So we're only kind of damaging the outside seed coat and then leaving the interior of the seed undamaged. There we go, that's a nice kind of uh, entry point there. What we're doing is simply creating entry point for moisture to get in. These prepared seeds can then be soaked as normal and then sown, and this will dramatically improve germination speed, reducing the risk of them just languishing and rotting away. And then for peas and beans, you can just use a sharp knife to carefully nick the seed coats opposite to where the eye is. Turn it round and just gently scratch away a little bit of the seed coat like that. And then, as normal, go ahead and soak them and then sow them promptly once they're soaked. An alternative and perhaps unexpected way to treat those seed coats is using hydrogen peroxide. Now, none of us likes to use nasty chemicals and this might ring alarm bells, but when you look at the chemical formula, H2O2, then you realise it's quite benign. This breaks down into nothing more than water and oxygen. Now, hydrogen peroxide is usually used for cleaning, disinfecting, even dyeing your hair, but it has great uses for seeds too. Let me show you. So I've got one cup of normal water in here, and I'm just gonna add two tablespoons of the hydrogen peroxide solution. Now you're looking for something that's between one and 3%, which is normally how it's sold. You don't want it stronger than that, otherwise it's gonna be too strong. Now just give it a little bit of a stir up, and then add your seeds as normal. Now in this instance, we're gonna have them soaking here for just half an hour only, and then once the time's up, we can drain it off and then continue soaking for up to 12 hours in normal water. Obviously, you want your hydrogen peroxide solution to go as far as it can, so one way to eke it out is to pop your seeds into an ice cube tray like this, and then just add your solution into each compartment like that. But make a note of what you've got in which compartment so that you don't get mixed up. I found that some mixes, especially seed starting mixes, can get really, really dust dry if the bags aren't properly sealed down after each use. Now seeds need moisture to germinate, so if you've got dry stuff like this, it needs careful preparation beforehand. Let me just demonstrate what I mean. If I put this dry mix into a pot here, and then water it, what you'll find is that we're getting the mortar just kind of hanging around on the surface. It's not really draining through. And if I move my finger back, you can see it's really dry underneath. This needs to be prepared before we sow. So what I need to do is pre-wet the mix. So pop what I need into a tray, spread it out, and then just 
go over it with watering can or sprayer like this and kind of massage the moisture in until we're getting a nice even moisture content. There we go, that's nice and evenly moist now. So rather than repelling the moisture, being hydrophobic, the moisture can actually drain through. Potting mixes that are on either heat mats or under grow lights will dry out a lot quicker. So be disciplined and check your seedlings every single day, no excuses, and do water anything as it needs it to keep it nice and moist. Now remember, if something has started to germinate and then can't get enough moisture, well, it may well falter and even fail, and we obviously don't want that. Covering your seed with a humidity dome or clear plastic is a great way to keep hold of that vital moisture, but this will need to be removed the moment that seedlings appear, or you run the risk of encouraging disease in what will be a very humid environment. At the very least, let the water come up to room temperature before using it. And when you do water, use warm water if possible. Water that is warm to the touch won't shock your seeds. Now this is especially important for warm season crops. By watering with warmer water, we're helping to keep the soil temperature up. So we're not checking valuable progress by suddenly introducing colder water. Try and match the particle size of the potting mix you're using with what you are sowing. So larger seeds will be fine with a standard all-purpose potting mix, but for smaller seeds, you might want to sieve it to make sure you've got a nice fine grain. Most seeds do need a little bit of light to help them germinate. Now what that means in practice is just sowing the seeds and then covering them to very approximately the diameter depth of that seed. Although some seeds can go a little bit deeper and are mostly influenced by warmth. But with really tiny seeds, those guys really do need maximum light and should just be sown on the surface. But if in doubt, just consult the seed packet instructions. Seed of course needs to be viable if it's going to germinate. Older seed can give patchy results, especially if the seed hasn't been stored correctly. Now it's worth checking the back of the seed packet where you can often find the packing and sow by dates. That will give you a really good indication, of course. If you have saved your own seed, then bear in mind how long seed of different crops tends to last for, and this table here should give you a good idea. If you're a little unsure as to whether your seeds are good or not, then you can conduct a simple germination test. Just sow a test sample into plug trays or pots and then contrast how many seeds were sown with how many seedlings appear to get a rough germination rate. Now an alternative to that is to sow onto damp paper towel like this. So moisten it and then put some seeds across the surface. Now I like to work in multiples of 10, it makes the maths a little bit easier. Space your seeds across one half and then fold it over and then just gently roll it up and then pop it into a bag like this, a clear bag or any bag for that matter. And then pop in a label so you know what you've got and seal it up. Now this is gonna be kept at the ideal temperature for these seeds. Now you want to leave them for at least a week or however long it normally takes for the seeds to germinate and then carefully unfold it and check every day until you're satisfied that what's going to germinate has germinated. And then you can just do a simple calculation to find out your percentage germination rate. If the paper towel is drying out at any point by the way, just do re-wet it. Many gardeners like to use this same method to actually pre-germinate seeds before they plant them. Now this is great for hard to germinate seeds and it means you can get radically improved germination rates. And then you've got an exact number of seeds that you know have germinated and you can plant them directly at their final spacings. Now they'll be really small, tiny little seedlings with just the root showing, but the fact they've already germinated means you're one step ahead. You'll know exactly how many you've got, but also it saves any bother of transplanting seedlings of say, like parsnips, like I'm sowing here, or sowing them thickly and then having to thin them out. This is a really popular technique for seeds such as parsnip, chard, cilantro or coriander, cabbage, and just about any warm season crop, like say tomato, squash or peppers. 
I hope this video will act as a handy reference as you start sowing seeds this spring. Or for more seed starting inspiration, watch these videos next. I'll catch you next time.